charming. What's going on, everyone? It's the Niskel. Welcome back to Let's Play Conker's Bad Fur Day. Last time, we woke up from one hell of a hangover. And now we are about to go around and help, you know, help people around the windmill. Because, obviously, we are the hero, we must help everyone. Now, as you see here, chocolate. This is our life throughout the whole game. And actually, if you come out as soon as the chocolate is introduced, if you turn off your game, turn it back on, you will have a full life bar. Even though they give you enough chocolate to get a full life bar, it's just a little funny something. Oh, those nasty, nasty wasps. Whatever shall we do? My beautiful hive is gone. Oh, I'll never see it again now. What do you want me to do about it? Please get it back for us. Otherwise, I don't know what we're going to do. <laughs> okay, okay, calm down. I'll go and get it for you. Now, where is it? Oh, just follow the signs. <laughs> oh, what I to do. So we have to go to the nasty side of town to get your hive. Well, screw you, I'm going over here. Let's go. Uh, let's actually go up to that windmill since it's so big and awesome and... Aw, oh, these guys. Earthworms. These are the worst enemies in the game, and they only appear around the windmill and in another chapter. You cannot hurt them, but boy can they hurt you. Get too close to one of them, it'll... It'll... Yeah, this. Ah... Uh. They're really hard to figure out where they're going to come up, so you either have to walk up the... W Get off me! <sighs> so you either have to walk up the windmill really slowly, take your time, but if you're impatient like me, you'll do this method. Jumping off the side of the windmill and then hovering over to the other side. Pretty good tactic to get away from these guys. Oh. Who are those guys? Oh, hello there. Um... And what do you do then? <laughs> It'll cost you. Oh, how much? A lot. Come back when you got more money. Go on, on your bike. There are actually quite a few cutscenes you can do over here with Mr. Barrel, and it, it gets a lot funnier. Oh, would you get off me? Wow, that seemed really avoidable. Anyway, I, I'm gonna go and get that hive back so we can actually get some cash. Alright, so up here, do you, n you notice this uh, middle thing here, how it slows you down? That's gonna play kind of a big role here in this upcoming chase scene, and... Uh-oh, the music changed. Oh, there's the hive. Uh, how should I tackle this? Hmm. I'll just pick it up and take it. Hey, some wise guy's trying to steal our nice new hide. Come on, boss. Let's go get him. Yeah, let's get him. Holy crap, there are giant wasps that are going to sting me. Maybe if I just run away as fast as possible, I can get this hive back to the queen and maybe she can do something. Oh, maybe we should avoid that big hump in the hill because it'll slow me down and they'll be able to sting me. If I keep running, if I keep following this path, they won't get me. Yeah, this is the supposed second boss of the game and if you just follow the path all the way back, they can't hurt you. Just don't slow down at all or fall off the cliff or else they will sting you. Oh, awesome. Um. Eat that, mother buzzer. Mr. Squirrel, and none of this would have happened if it weren't for that no good husband of mine. He's gone off, you know, with another woman. Oh, really? That doesn't surprise me. What? Nothing. Anyway, as a reward for your good service to the bee community, I present you with this. Cha-ching! Yeah, cash, right. 
Now you may be thinking what this game, what can you do with money? And by the way, how does the hive keep getting stolen when the queen is packing heat like that? You didn't need me. Anyway, the introduction of money. Uh, during certain parts of the game, depending on whether you have a certain amount of money or not, depends on if you move forward in this very linear game. Oh, hey, who's this? Looks like uh, one of them skills. Look at me, get down there, kick the shit out of him. Alright, well, wait till he comes up here, alright. Okay, then, yeah. Fuck you too, shitheads. Hello, it's me again, Mr. Scarecrow Birdie. Right, what seems to be the problem? Oh yes, you need manual, otherwise or not, that doesn't work, manual, it costs you. Oh, how much? Uh, got any Mepsi box? What? Don't matter, actually, uh, I think, uh, well, uh, uh, a ten dollar, long time, you love manual long time. There you go. Yeah. Wait, Conker, what go. are you doing? That's a hundred dollars! You fool! <laughs> you say you like money, but you don't know how to handle it? What is wrong with get you? Why would you give away that much money? Come here. Come oh, wait. I wanna go back in there. Hurry up. You must be really okay. lucky the money has a mind of its own and really likes your pocket. Okay, I know it's just a graphical limitation of the N64. It's an instruction book. Now, here, it, at certain B-pads, when you get farther into the game, it'll give you a more advanced tutorial. This one's basically gonna go over how to use the slingshot, or any other items that you have to shoot with. And if you ever need to bring up the manual again, press L and B, as they're saying right there. Now, something about this game if you've never played on the nintendo 64 you need to know it only has one stick and that can get kind of difficult when aiming projectiles i mean nowadays we have the two stick option which is a lot easier to aim and fire this one pretty difficult because there's also nothing to show you where your shots lining up now a tip that i have found to help get past these guys is after you shoot once, even if it hits them or not, always shoot another shot. Because if you do hit them, it'll immediately they'll immediately get killed with the second hit. So if you just shoot the one, and then shoot one right afterwards, it'll hit him before he even gets the chance to figure out where you are. And dead. There we go, I kicked the shit out of you, you bugs. Anyway, we have a new open door, which magically opened because we killed four dung beetles. So let's see where it goes. Hmm, let's see. That way, or that way. Hmm, that way smells a bit ooey. Hmm, let me see. Hmm. Screw the rules! I'm in control this day, Conker! We're going to the shitty place! Oh. Uh, maybe this wasn't such a good idea. Oh well. Luckily we have context sensitive items. Now I want you to pay attention to his Time clock o'clock. here. Time it you now. take a look at that time. Oh. Well, let's bother, I'll come back later. Now, if his pocket watch is going by the the way that normal pocket watches go, of course I haven't had a pocket watch in a long time. Normally where the top of the watch latches on to the other side to make it open and close. Normally, that's where the 12 is. Mm. If you notice, it was actually 10.30. Now, go that's that going by the um, fact that I haven't I seen a pocket watch in a really long time, so maybe I'm absolutely wrong, and chances are I am. Uh, is it safe, I wonder? Mm. <laughs> Let's find out. I love the fact that Conker doesn't love to listen to the rules. And rare knows you want to go this way. So basically, you can get all the way to this last step, and the cutscene will trigger. You are allowed to pass the barrier, which is something I did try in another take. You can actually jump past the last plank, and it won't break. So literally, the only thing that will trigger this cutscene 
is you landing on that last plank. Now there actually is a small easter egg here. When you're looking around with Conker and you swerve it around, he'll start following you. Such a cute, curious little squirrel with a filthy mouth and a sex and cash addiction. But that's okay. Now, I think one of the biggest dick moves that Rare pulled in this game is... Did any of you see that before I actually jumped for it? They made the rope blend in with everything on the lower levels, making you think there was no way out. Only after you've played it before would you know that there is a way out. I'm trying to think, like, the devs over at Rare were going, uh, We'll make it so they'll never get out! That'll show them! But we don't want to do that. We make family-friendly games. Oh, yeah, that's right. Well, all right, we'll find we'll have one way to get out, not just shutting off your game. I'm so sorry for that. But anyway, let's go visit Mr. Barrel again. Now that we have money, see if he can do anything about these worms. Now, something you may have noticed is we got this cutscene again. Every time you get a new amount of money, the worms will show up again. As if to say, oh, you've never been here before? Well, we're loading a new cutscene at the top of the windmill. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Now, uh, Mr. Barrel only has about four different cutscenes. Here's the next one. Oh, how much do I need? You'll find out when you've got it. Get lost. We'll come here later when we have a lot more money, and then we'll see what happens. Now, anyway, we should go to where Conker told us to, so let's go! So, what is the key elements in this experimentation? We have the table here, the milk in the glass broken. Ah, I see problem. Oh, and the seems to be a... Hmm. Seems to be a... Hmm. I must do some experiments, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And we will sort this out. And when my head is ready, then, my God, we will see who uses the duct tape. <laughs> Plotting and scheming in the Panther King's castle. I like it. I hate that guy, the Panther King. Anyway, a whole new area. We got a big old farmhouse to look into next time. But I actually want to show something off since this video was kind of on the short side. Uh, you call 13 minutes short. I'm going to show you all of Conker's idle animations, which he has a lot of. You thought it was revolutionary when Sonic just tapped his foot if you stand stood there for too long? Conker has a million of them. One of my favorites is if you stand here only at this signpost and the butterflies have to be flying, Conker tries to burn them. It's hilarious. So we have juggling, we have burning, we've got brushing yourself off, we've got a yo-yo, and he actually does tricks sometimes. And uh, something he will sometimes always do is let you know he's bored. Yeah, I know, I know the feeling of being really, really bored. And uh, there are some points where if you wait too long, he will actually break the fourth wall and talk directly at you. Hey, hello, is anybody playing this game? Hilarious. He has a total of four different quotes, which I'll show you now. Oh, never mind. Something I found while waiting around, he will actually whistle the tune. Now, this is really cool because... At different points during the song, he can come in at any time and whistle, which means the entire theme has been whistled all the way through. Pretty cool. And whenever he starts whistling, the tune backs down. And then as soon as you get back up, he stops whistling. Nope, I still can't tell the time. That one is probably my favorite. Looking around like the curious critter he is. Oh, I think he's died. Are you dead? Another one of my favorites. Hello? Hey, what are you doing? Stop doing that! You gotta go blind! Can't be a mature game without a masturbation joke. Uh, the last one he'll say is... 
I believe it's I'd like to go home at one point. Thank you very much. And uh, he has weird taste in women if he's looking at a dirty beaver magazine. Unclogging the dam. All right. And last but not least, he'll bring out his Game Boy and play some Killer Instinct. Oh, rare. You and your Easter eggs. So, now we're going to make a seamless transition into Live and Reloaded. Combo Breaker! 